So there are two things I really like, big guns and Gundams. Now me personally, I kind of like it when Gundams are pretty excessive. Some of you may agree with me, some of you may not, because when it comes to excessiveness, it can be too distracting to other people. Yeah, you're not wrong because the take the full armor unicorn, for example, it's got bazookas, gatling guns, beam rifles, beam javelins, beam shields, and even grenades. Now, is there a Gundam that can satisfy people who are into big guns and people who are not into excessive mobile suits? Well, that is when the heavy arms comes in. And let's not forget the cherry on top, Nostalgia. How's it going guys? It is Plastic Disaster and today I'm going to do the review of the Gundam Heavy Arms from the anime Mobile Suit Gundam Wing or New Mobile Report Gundam Wing. I'm so excited to put this kit together because the Heavy Arms is one of my favorite mobile suits in the Gundam Wing series. And if you guys seen the anime, you know it's famous for using the same stock footage over and over and over again. And I also like the pilot himself. He's a really interesting character. And to give a brief backstory of what Gundam Wing is about, basically five Gundams are sent to Earth doing some badass missions. Later on, they come together like a boy band. They're not really a boy band, but if you look at the pilots coming together, yeah, they kind of look like they are a boy band. But anyways, taking a look at the box art, we see the heavy arms blowing some Leos up alongside with the sand rock. On this side of the box, we see the front and back shot of the heavy arms, the various action poses, and some really nice gimmicks and weapons. And finally, this side of the box, we have a brief backstory of the heavy arms, and we have another badass line art of the heavy arms, and once again, the sand rock. And taking a look inside the box, we are gonna be greeted with Four bags of runners and a manual and an advertisement for these Gundam Universe figures. I have no plans of collecting these figures and if you guys do, let me know in the comments below and tell me about your experience about these figures. Taking a look at the cover of the manual, here's what it looks like when it's all painted up, pen aligned, and top coated. And here is the information about the heavy arms itself. So taking a closer look inside the manual, it looks like we're going to be using most of the parts and some parts are exed out. And it looks like there are some extra hand parts if I'm correct. And right here you're going to start off with the body, the head, the shoulders, arms, and you're going to start with the legs and you're going to finish it off by putting the waist together and the accessories and finally assembling the heavy arms. And in the back of the manual, it looks like we have more information about the weapons, a familiar line art, and a color guide if you want to paint it. Starting off with Runner A, it's going to be a multi-color parts. We have yellow parts, orange, red, and it seems like bluish gray. And looks like I see parts for the head, the parts of the shoulders, that's parts for the chest, that's definitely parts for the shoulders, parts for the arm, and I believe that's parts for the backpack, and that's parts for the big gun. Runner B1 is going to be the gray part, so it looks like we have parts for the elbows and the arms, and it looks like we also have some hand parts, and Runner B2 is going to be a copy of this section. Runner C is going to be more red parts, and it looks like I see parts for the feet, that's part for the big gun. Skirt, 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 and skirt. Runner D1 and D2 is going to be a bit of a weird one, but they are parts for the white parts. I see parts for the legs right here. I see parts for the waist or torso, excuse me. And I see parts for the ankle. That's definitely parts for the head right there. Runner E1 is going to be more gray parts. And I think I might have said that Runner C had the knee parts, but it turns out it's actually runner E1 and E2. So anyways, I see parts for the big guns, and that's parts for the chest. I see the parts for the knife and missiles right there, and of course the knee joints. Since I already said runner E2, it is a copy of this section. Small polycap runner and a small sticker sheet. I also noticed that the yellow and the gray ones, well, the big gray ones are the folding stickers. Not a big fan of that. But that about wraps up the unboxing. You already know that I'm very excited to put this together. So I'm gonna put it together right now and I'll see you guys right after that. All right, so here's the heavy arms all put together. And I gotta say, I was blown away with the color separation and the engineering on this kit. And as an out of box presentation, you can somewhat get away with it. Well, 
as long as you're putting the minimal effort in. Because when I show you these uh, stickers, it's only like small color apps, and I guess lazy modelers will enjoy this one. Speaking of stickers, let's talk about sticker placement. The eye stickers, of course, go on your eyes. This little green circle goes right on the forehead. This little green sticker goes to the back of the head. Bring on to the chest. These blue stickers go onto the chest, and while these yellow stickers go onto these parts of the chest. The long black sticker goes to this part of the back skirt. The number seven stickers wraps around this part of the side skirt while these little four stickers go to the bottom of the side skirts. Make sure you pay attention to which side it goes on. And moving on to the legs, the big wraparound gray stickers goes right here and while these small gray stickers goes to the ankle armor. And as for seam lines, there's not a whole lot and that's what makes it great. One of the most common place for a seam line would be on the shoulder, but it's actually right here so it could go as a detail. There's a seam line on the front of the arm and in the back of the arm. And there is a seam line on the front and the back of the lower leg and this part can go as a detail. As for proportions of this kit, I thought it would be just a little bit more chunkier, but hey, I'm okay with this skinnier or lean look. One part of the head that kind of weirded me out the most. Okay, I think it's better off if I take it off and show it you guys. I thought the head would be a little wider in terms of length, but uh, overall, it doesn't really bother me that much. Okay, so that about wraps up the out of box presentation. I'm gonna work on this kit and I'll see you guys right after. And after all that effort, here is the heavy arms. And I gotta say, he looks even better than before. Well, obviously. The only hard part for me when I was uh, detailing this kit would be the blue ones on his chest, but it came out okay. Not the best paint job in the world, but it did do the job. For accessories, starting off with hand options. Of course, he already has the weapon holding hands, which holds nothing. And next up, you have these open palm hands. Two of these, I guess, thumbs up hands. Well, keep in mind, they do share the same hand options as the sand rock. And what's on the kit, first up, taking a look at the shoulders, you have these missile pods. And yes, I did paint these silver. Moving on to the chest, you got these two Gatling guns. Right there. And yes, I did paint the little green things right here and paint each of these tiny barrels silver. Moving on to these legs, you have these little micro missile pods. For melee options, he has his combat knife, which you can swing out. And yes, I did paint that part silver. And I saved the best accessory for last, the Gatling gun. And for stop motion people out there, yes, it does spin. So have at it. You do have the handle, so the heavy arms can hold it with both hands. But in the anime, I don't think he ever has the handle. We attach the minigun to the arm. All you gotta do is pop off the left hand and attach it like so. And it's not going anywhere. Pretty solid connection. And in case if you don't wanna use the minigun, there is an adapter piece. I already attached it to the backpack. And you just plug it in. And here's how it looks. So now that I think about it, what if I buy another heavy arms so it could do wheel two mini guns, but I'm going to uh, get rid of the handles. Just a thought. And let's move on to the articulation. The head is gonna be on a double ball joint. The shoulder is on a ball joint. It can also swing out. The arms can go up that far, not even 90 degrees. Bicep swivel, double bend on the elbow, and the wrist is on a ball joint. The waist is on a ball joint. Of course, you can move side to side and it can swivel, and you also get a pretty unique ab crunch. Okay, so I had to remove one of the side skirts so you can look closely that this is a hinge joint right in there. The front skirt can move up that far. The side skirt can move out that far. It can also rotate and the back skirt can move out that far. The leg is on a rocking mechanism. And speaking of the leg, it can go up that far, move back that far. It can do the splits. It's just that due to the side skirt, it gets in the way double bend at the knee. So as for the feet, there is a hinge right in there so it can shift forward and back and a ball joint right down there. And the ankle armor is on a ball joint as well. As for the toes, it can move up that far and move 
down that much. As for the pivot, it's a pretty nice one. And of course, there's nothing on the back. So overall, the articulation of this kit is actually pretty great. You can even recreate Troa's circus jumping trick. Size comparisons, here he is right next to the standard size RX782. And I noticed that I think they're almost as tall as each other because in the anime, well in universe I mean, the heavy arms should be on the shorter side. Well maybe because due to the great engineering they had to compromise the scale. Maybe I'm wrong, who knows. And since we're on the theme of Gundam Wing, here he is right next to the Wing Zero and the Sandrock. God, I wish I had the Death Scythe. And I wish Bandai would make the Shenlong Gundam. Don't worry, this isn't canon. Thank you for clarifying, Sandrock. And finally, here he is right next to Earthrise slash Kino Optimus Prime and NECA 1994 Godzilla. All right, let's move on to my final thoughts. So my final thoughts for the high grade after Colony Heavy Arms, overall, it's a really great kit. I highly recommend this to any of the Gundam Wing fans. Or that you like big weapons, but you just don't want it to be too excessive. I mean, there is an excessive Heavy Arms kit, but those are like Master Grade P Bandai stuff right there. And speaking of the Master Grade, I would love to build the Master Grade regular heavy arms. And if you guys built it before, let me know in the comments down below and tell me what you think about that kit. Okay, so that about wraps up the review. Is there anything you want to say, Sandrock? If you guys like this sort of content, please be sure to subscribe to see more. If you want to see me have a key roll, check out Plastic Disaster and TFG collaboration on the Shattered Glass story. And speaking of Plastic Disaster, you will see you guys in the next video. As a friendly reminder, since September is right around the corner, it's bird time. And you might be asking, what does September have to do with birds? Uh, well, I just want to do another theme. It has nothing to do with it. That's all.